Hello and welcome from Berlin, Germany. My name is Katharina Baum and I'm working at the Hasso Plattner Institute for Digital Engineering in Potsdam, close to Berlin. Here, I'm bringing you the presentation for my poster, Differential Predictions from Integrated Multiomics Molecular Networks. Actually, what we're bringing to you is a new pipeline, how to concertedly analyze multiomics data that are gene-based, so mRNA or protein data, together with metabolomics data. Let me give you a short overview of the pipeline. Given two patient groups, for example, cancer patients with different phenotypes, groups A and group B, for different molecular data layers, what we do is we generate integrated molecular networks that characterize both patient groups. In the second step, we compute the differential networks from, or the differential network, from the integrated molecular networks of the different patient groups. We use the edge information from the differential network to derive differential predictions, for example, on drug response. Here are some details, especially on how networks are generated. That is really key to our data analysis pipeline. First of all, we rely for single layer networks on correlation, meaning that for all samples of condition A or condition B, what we compute is the correlation between the measurements of all samples of gene one to the correlation of all samples of gene two. And the correlation is now the edge weight between the nodes. However, this is giving rise to complete networks. So all pairs of nodes would be connected. And for example, for mRNAs, where you easily measure 18,000 different mRNAs, you would give rise to networks with 360 million edges. And this is way too big. So what we do is that we reduce the networks and focus on the most essential edges. So the edges with the largest negative or largest positive weight. After doing this to all layers, for example, those four mRNA protein, phosphoprotein metabolite layer, we connect the different layers. For this, we use prior information. For example, the dogma of molecular gene expression is that given an mRNA, it's translated to a certain protein, so we would connect the two with an edge of weight one. Similarly, we would connect a protein to its phosphorylated form with an edge of weight one. Including now metabolite data is more difficult, and for this, we use database information, such as from STITCH. STITCH is giving exactly the information on which metabolites are interacting with which protein, and this information we simply leverage from there. Of course, there are other sources, but we went with this first. Now we have our heterogeneous multiomics networks for condition A and for condition B, but they are still a bit noisy. So in order to denoise them a bit, we use the so-called integrated interaction scores. So we define them. So instead of going with the edge weight that I showed you before, what we do is we replace this edge weight by a more smoothed out version of it by integrating over different layers as well. So what we do is for two nodes, we consider all paths of length one, that would be the edge itself, of length two here in blue, and of length three here also denoted in shades of blue that are alternatives, and measure the path strengths of these alternative paths. We add up all those averages and we get a number between minus three and three in the end. These are the networks that we're basing our, our predictions on. From these networks, we would then generate differential network and make differential predictions. So this is how the pipeline works approximately. I, of course, brought you also a case study. This is this. For a case study, we used estrogen receptor stratified breast cancer patients. For this, we have many samples, so 200 samples for each condition around for RNA-seq. 68 or 40 samples for proteomics and phosphoproteomics, and also 60 samples for metabolomics from yet another study. What I showed you here is how the edge weight is compared to the integrated interaction scores. And you see that they are related, but they are not identical. And I will be very happy to discuss details on that later. What we compared is your negative versus your positive. So this is the characterizing the differential networks network with the seven different types of edges, so either between layers or within the four layers. Now, what we did 
in this case study is also to predict drug response. So given this differential network with approximately 40,000 nodes and these 600,000 or 700,000 edges, what we predicted for 300 drugs is a differential drug response. So does the drug act differently in either negative or in either positive breast cancer patients? We compared these predictions to a grand truth from cancer cell lines, cancer therapeutic response portal of these 300 drugs. And for different thresholds for the ground truth, we saw that this is our rock curve for our predictor. We saw that it performs better than random, so not stellar, but and there's room for improvement, but still it's performing quite well. And especially it's enriching positive hits among the top results. If you want to play around with our pipeline and want to analyze your, the data yourself, feel free to use our R package that we provide. It's a combination of R, also using partly Python, but you don't need not to be familiar in Python, so it's all hidden from you. So you can just go in, into R and, and use it. It's available at GitHub, and very soon it will be also available at C1. So long, I will be very happy to discuss with you what you have as input, and very happy to meet you later. Bye.